I want to give you guys an SLI update. Okay, so first of all, uh, most of you guys have seen this bridge. Uh, we actually have three different versions of it. There's a triple slot, a dual slot, and a single slot. That's like space, you know, two slots, three slots, four slots. But on the back of it, you'll notice that even on the three slot guy, there's only two connectors. And that's because it's connecting only two GPUs. It's a high bandwidth bridge, which is allowing us to more than double the effective copy engine you know, for display between two GPUs. Now that's important because as you get higher and higher resolutions on displays, and you get higher and higher bandwidths and you do more of them, you need more bandwidth. When we first did the original SLI bridge, just one, and it was back in the, you know, what was it, like a long time ago, and it was single display and it was, you know, relatively low refresh rates. And so what's happened is over time, monitors and monitor topologies have increased. So we've had to transfer some data over the bus. Now with this new bridge, we're dramatically increasing the available bandwidth. And so now we can support surround. We can support you know, 5K at 60 hertz. We can support you know, all kinds of high-end monitors and do perfectly interleaved transfers. Yes, sir. Are, are you only for they are, in fact, only for two cards. Stay tuned. Okay, now, is there, <laughs> would be particularly challenging, or otherwise I would hope you do it, to make it flexible so that you don't have to have three separate uh, things just if you're playing with your configuration, your card configuration. Which which three things? Uh, three different in, uh, individual units. Just oh, yeah, if, yeah. Th this is purely based on your card spacing, right? Um, yeah, uh, you're saying, well, we've got three, wouldn't it be better if we just had one that was flexible? Yeah. And the truth is, um, at the end of the day, the, the rigidness of this is necessary to get the bandwidth up where we need it to be. Okay. If we could make it sort of a floppy thing that we wanted to do one, we, just, we certainly would. If you think back on our original SLI bridge, it was kind of that floppy thing. I mean, we have rigid versions of it, but then we have these floppy things. So this is much, much faster. And it's got two links that are connecting the top of the cards. And that's necessary for things like 4K at 144 hertz and surround. Yeah, so this is forward looking, okay, but it is forward two. Yes, sir, Kyle Bennett. You're not gonna support three and four card SLI? That is an excellent question. I will answer in just one second. Yes. So this is uh, before and after. Um, if you look at this, I'm showing you uh, 1080 SLI on the new bridge and 1080 SLI on the old bridge. What's happening here is 4K surround. So we've exceeded the bandwidth that's available on our traditional existing link. And a lot of people have complained about this experience. It's been something that we've wanted to fix for a long time. But again, what happened is we ran out of bandwidth on the bridge. We could not do the transfer. This is an FCAT chart. For those of you guys who are know about FCAT, we're looking at the display. It's actually not like fraps. It's looking at the display time. And you can see the black kind of going up and down. Each one of those is roughly equivalent to a PCI Express transfer. Whenever you're doing a PCI Express transfer, you're going to hit bottlenecks with other stuff that's going on. And depending on you know, how your system's configured, you're going to get variation in when you receive the data so that you can display it. With our bridge, all that goes away because it's a dedicated path for just the display. And you can see the blue line is dramatically <laughs> tighter. And that tightness uh, gives you a better experience. Tom, yes. The price go up the uh, well, we don't, I don't, I, you know, the, question? Uh, the question is for anybody over there, uh, maybe my boss, does the price go up on <laughs> this versus the old bridges? Do you know? Uh, I don't, we haven't determined. Yeah. Yeah, so we have not announced pricing on this guy. Um, one thing we are doing is we're making the design collateral available for our partners, so everybody who wants to make a, 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 bridge, or a bridge like that will be enabled to do so, including you know, the guys that make the fancy bridges. Now, partly the reason this is all working is because Pascal has faster I.O., right? This bridge is a Pascal bridge. It doesn't do anything if you put it on Maxwell. Okay? Now, also in our control panel, we'll be informing users, hey, you've got a slow bridge. If you connect your slow bridge on Pascal and you're trying to do a configuration where it matters, we have a pop-up in our control panel to say, think about a fast bridge. Hey, the, yeah. Over here. Over where? No, oh, in front of you. Ah, yes. Yes, Kevin. Are you using MV Link? No, this is not an MV Link bridge. This is an MIO display bridge. MV Link is actually a memory interface. So uh, we're, we're using a display interface here. Um, yeah, that's where we're at. OK, so for the sake of time and lunch, I'm going to move on. Uh, this is going to Kyle's question, okay? 
Now, um, to understand what we're doing with SLI, you kind of have to understand a little bit bigger picture, right? Uh, Microsoft has a couple of modes of multi-GPU, and it's been largely confused, um, and we've seen a lot of sort of confused press and things. I'm going to try to give you my view. Okay, there's, there's actually a lot of confusing, contradictory language in the documentation as well. So this is just my view. Um, there's a, a mode of working with GPUs that's called multi-display adapter mode. And what that's talking about is not multi-display, but multiple display adapters. Okay, and in this mode of software, the application is responsible for managing whatever algorithms you want. The GPUs are effectively independent, right? They, they don't... There's no like driver that's doing any secret sauce. In this mode, it's completely up to the application. What that means is you can have a number of adapters, which is the software visible structure, that is however many GPUs, and they can be from any company, and they can, you know, it's, it's basically whatever. Um, in this mode, you cannot use our bridge because you don't know about the bridge, right? The bridge is not exposed in multi-display adapter mode. Um, and lastly, you can support any number of GPUs. Now there's another mode that's called link display adapter mode. And in this mode, multiple GPUs that are similar are coupled together logically. And uh, Microsoft is relying on somebody, in this case the driver, to present an abstraction to the application. Okay, so the abstraction is here in the first column, let's call that implicit SLI. This is what we're used to, right? NVIDIA implicit SLI means we're gonna do the work to sort of say, all the GPUs that are on NVIDIA that are uh, all together the same type that meet our requirements so that we can you know, make them work well together, they're gonna be presented to the application as if it were one GPU. We do the work through an algorithm called AFR to make SLI work, right? And that is a difficult challenge because honestly, applications are changing. They're becoming more and more complex. And as they become more and more complex, we're finding that getting good results for more than two GPUs is very, very difficult. Right? So what we've said for Pascal is, you know what, we're going to focus our energies on doing two GPUs extremely well. And we're communicating to the market that this is a software architecture kind of issue. Yeah, we can turn it on, and yep, uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to enable individual users to turn it on. So if, let's say you're some power enthusiast and you want to overclock or, or you want to build the Uber rig and you know what you're doing and you understand the risks that this is not going to have every title, right? Because we know, and all you guys know, that it's a difficult problem, right? AFR requires you know, independence in frames and that's just not the way games are going. Games are becoming interdependent in their frames because they're doing post-processing. So, I mean, we're left with a choice, right? We can say to our gamers, Build the best system you want. It will do the best we can. Um, but at the end of the day, we kind of know that it's getting increasingly difficult. Okay? But on the other hand, we don't want to say, hey, you, you know what the risks are. You know what you want to do? We're going to allow, we're going to enable you to turn it on. But by default, we're going to be two. Okay? So that's a communication to the whole world, to our community, to our partners, to our system builders. We recommend two. Is that clear? Hope you know why we're doing that, because we want our gamers to have a great experience. But again, if you're an enthusiast, you want to build world record stuff, you want to run the games you've got, um, there's a method that we're providing through an unlocking enthusiast key that you can download from our website. Okay? So that's our plan for 2A. Now, we also have explicit SLI. Explicit SLI is kind of like the first one, only we're turning on all of the little goodnesses that we can have inside of our driver. So if you're an application, again, explicit SLI is application uh, uh, algorithms, whatever you want to invent, um, you can take advantage of effectively all the hardware that NVIDIA provides. Okay, so there's three modes for multi-adapter. There's the two that are application controlled, and in that world, we support whatever an application can do. Okay, in the middle mode where NVIDIA is committing to do a great job to make uh, games work in general, we got to make that more tractable, and that means two. Okay, any uh, any questions on that? Question. Yes, sir. Well, well. Oh, we got to go. We got to go. Oh, all right. Yes. Okay. Um, this is Kevin from Tech Radar. Hey, Kevin. Uh, it's not really a question, but more like right, You're just going to cut on me. I'm feeling <laughs> a little vulnerable right now. Uh, I'm wondering if you guys have started testing 
SLI with other graphics cards, not 1080, mm -hmm. like say 980, mm -hmm. and the user just upgrades. Because Direct, Direct X12 allows you to be more flexible with how you can SLI. Yeah, but well I love that question because it brings me back to the table. Okay, now what you're describing <laughs> is the left hand column. You're saying the Direct X11 allows you to be more flexible. What you mean is that if there's an application designed to use asymmet you know, asymmetric vendors or asymmetric GPUs, will we support it? Well, the truth is we're not going to do QA across all the GPUs that have ever been manufactured. We're focusing on the middle one. With the middle one is two, and the middle one is two of the same. Now, we're also going to make sure that our GPUs work well together for the other modes. But um, it's, not a, it's not an investment that we're willing to make to make sure that we work with every graphics card in a mode that we don't control the model, right? That, that just doesn't work. So to answer your question, I think that you need to dig deep into the model to really understand it. Yes, sir. Two quick questions about the uh, enthusiast unlockable three-way and four-way. Yes. So first, does that mean that you need to use the old slow SLI bridges? No. 